An industry group representing close to 200,000 Canadian farm families is putting more pressure on Ottawa to end rail blockades, disrupting the flow of goods around the country. The group says the most pressing shortages are animal feed and propane needed to heat barns. Joining us is Keith Curry. He's first vice president of the Canadian Federation of Agriculture. Keith Curry, thanks very much. I know you've been standing by for a couple of minutes there uh, uh, to speak to us. Thank you for doing so. Uh, how, how have you quantified uh, the the, uh, the financial toll of these blockades to the people you represent. Well, good morning, Paul. And, and those financial losses uh, vary across the province or across the country, depending on the region you're in and the commodity you're looking at. And we know that, w with respect to Western Grain movement, for example, we're talking about $63 million a week uh, is what the cost is. Uh, we really won't have a, a full detailed costing on this until it's over, and we can assess the the damage uh, from an economic standpoint. But we're talking about products both being stuck on rail lines, not getting into a processing facility. Or to market. Uh, we're talking about products that just can't get out uh, at all. We're talking about farmers who aren't getting cash for their products because they aren't able to market them right now. Uh, we don't know what's going to happen with, with respect to uh, the fact that we will run out of propane if this uh, blockade uh, continue and what's that going to mean to animal and human welfare uh, down the line. So it's, it's, it's an ongoing issue that we hope gets resolved very soon and then until it is resolved we'll have to wait and see what the da total damage is. How commonly is propane used as a heating fuel on farms around Canada? Oh, it's very common. Uh, a lot of areas of uh, rural and remote air areas in Canada do not have access to natural gas, so propane is the fuel of choice for energy. We know that about 80% of the livestock barns, such as poultry barns and wiener barns in Quebec, are heated by propane, and they are uh, roughly about a week away from running out of uh, their propane supply, so it's, it's very concerning right now. We've had rail blockades, we've had blockades of port uh, entrances as well. Is there any uh, do you distinguish at all between those two types of uh, obstructions? Well, they're, they're blocking movements of goods and services, and that's our concern. We know there's uh, very close to 50 ships sitting in the Vancouver port, sitting empty, and, and there's a cost in the tens of thousands per day per ship uh, for them to sit there empty and our concern with that is that cost is going to be borne back onto the farmer and we have no way to recoup those costs so uh, you know whether you're talking products perishable products that are sitting on rail cars in Ontario or Quebec or, or pork products that rely very heavily their export market relies on rail transportation or or the grain movement and goods and services movements out west uh, we need to have those products moving and so we need to find resolution to this situation sooner rather than later uh, is trucking an option for some of the farmers like who you represent? In, in some particular commodities, yes, but with respect to propane, uh, we rely very heavily in eastern Canada in particular on that propane being shipped by rail to the local supplier, local distributor. So we don't have uh, an overabundance of truck infrastructure. We also have a big shortage of drivers. So uh, it's, it's, a, it's an option to get some propane moving, but it's not a viable option for, for full pro propane distribution. Uh, grain movement could move by truck, but if we can't get it out through the port, uh, uh, we're trucking it to some place it's just going to sit on a truck so we we do need that rail movement into the ports have customers outside of canada who are accustomed to receiving a regular flow of canadian agricultural goods are they uh, are they raising complaints are they asking questions are they are they sitting patiently no that's a very real concern for us both currently and long term uh you know there's there's confidence in our system and the quality of the products we produce but that confidence of delivery is, is eroding very quickly and we don't want to have other countries who are relying on us to bring products to them to say you know what we can't depend on Canada we're going to go elsewhere looking for those products so we're very concerned in that regard with respect to international markets because we are a major exporting country when it comes to agriculture products. Uh, your organization wants to meet with the agriculture minister, uh, the minister of agriculture. Have you done that yet? And uh, 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 if so, or even if not, what uh, subjects do you want to? What what points do you really want to press? So we have had brief conversations with Minister Bebo. Uh, we also would like to try and have those conversations with our, with our uh, transportation minister and, and even the prime minister's office. We need to find resolve to this situation quickly. Uh, we, we'll continue to talk with Minister Bebo's office, uh, but there's, there's other aspects of government that are uh, places in government we need to talk to. 
So we're encouraging government to sit down with all the parties that are really uh, affected by this and let's see if we can help find a solution to this problem. Farmers have been through a lot. Uh, they're enduring this situation now. They've also been through uh, trade issues affecting uh, the, the United States, uh, China as well. Uh, have, have, what kind of financial stress have farmers been under this year uh, compared, to, uh, co compared to a typical year? Yeah, great points. I mean, 2019 was a very, very tough year for, for agriculture. Right across the country, we had uh, uh, really, really uh, hard weather issues with between drought and too much rain and a, a bad fall harvest uh, time weather-wise. We've had the, the geopolitics that involved trade issues. Um, so the, and then a couple of the CN strike last fall. Um, not only is there a tremendous economic stress on farmers, but the overall mental health uh, of the farm community has been really taxed this year. And, you know, we're very, very concerned uh, for the well-being, mental well-being of our, of our farm community as a whole. Uh, this is just one more thing that's really, really hurting them. And it's, and it's completely out of our control. It's not our fault and there's really nothing that we can do about it, but we have to bear the brunt of what's going on. And so we are very concerned. So we're asking our, our folks to check in on people. Uh, you know, neighbors need to talk to each other. Farmers need to reach out if they find themselves in a bad situation and the, the, the mental health aspect of this has been very, very tough. Keith Curry, thank you very much for a good conversation on an important issue. Keith Curry is first vice president of the Canadian Federation of Agriculture. As you saw in that shot, he was speaking to us from just across the street from Parliament Hill in Ottawa.